Oh. Okay. Ooh. <clears throat> okay, it looks like I uh, was able to get my uh, stream to work. Okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, good. Detects the mic. Yay! Perfect. Oh, my goodness. Thank the heavens. Okay, and what's your name? Let's see. Nom 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 nom. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> That's much better, mate. All right, awesome. Okay, that's awesome to hear. So, looks like I uh, I sound much better now. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, thank you so much for uh, telling me that. Uh, Lisa. Now I do hear a bit of static on my end, so uh, I know it, I know it's not my fault. But at least switching to USB port did did the job. Uh, I would say that too. So thank goodness, thank goodness. <clears throat> okay, and also just a quick reminder before I get with a uh, next interview. Uh, so uh, just like to say thank you, uh, thank you for I uh, I Kyle's uh, in New York City, Yen New York City. If you're still there. Uh, CT Gamer, if you're still all over there, um, hello, hello. Uh, so, but yeah, so um, it's gonna be. So yeah, so we're gonna go ahead and do the next interview in, in the moment here. Yeah, so we're gonna have another stream, a streamer, um, in our interview here. So, so the other one just want to go ahead and uh, just put a quick in a quick note so who i'm going to be streaming uh who i'm going to be interviewing next which is a someone that i'm going to be interviewing a they do a show every week and this is a, a show uh they do it's uh it's uh with two guys over at huts with in huttsville alabama uh i i watch their podcasts every week i think their podcast is um great podcast a lot of great material with um uh tech technology uh which they do tech stuff over with southern geek which i actually i've subscribed to them on itunes and so which also i listen to them offline whenever i get the chance chance so i look which with this uh, ipod classic <laughs> i think uh the ipod classic it is some is always a great device to go and and listen to them I listen to them whenever i go out go out on the ballot so but and also i'm always live watching them so i think they're a great um they're a great show and definitely recommend that too if uh if you want to listen to some geek culture uh some guys down in the south so i say take uh take a listen to them which is uh southern greek geek uh but anyways i'm going to be doing the interview within a few minutes here you just want to go ahead and make sure that i can get in touch with uh camera Cameron, one of the hosts of, uh, which one of the hosts of Rocket Punch Go and and Southern Geek, which I fig figured they would get a good recognition on, and I figured they uh, on on the show like this. But I would love to go ahead and get get on with it and do an interview. And before I go ahead and shoot uh, Cameron a call, and want to just go ahead and let you guys know about uh, uh, humble. Uh, Humble Bundo, which I am a, a a partner with Humble Bundo. If you are have not he heard about Humble Bundo, uh, they do a lot of, um, a lot of good works with uh, the community, which with which is they don't do a lot of charities with the communities like uh, um, uh, St. Jude's uh, Children's Hosp Network Hospital, di different things that they do. So if you uh, want to go ahead and contribute something or or how much or how little you can do to contribute uh, to many how much use you can so but anyways uh, I'm a hun I'm a humble partner so uh, check a look into the links down the prof on down the profile I'll have everything down below 
and you can go so help and also you're not so just supporting uh so anyone that uh um one of your favorite charities but it's not just the children but you you can support anyone that uh you wish to support but anyways uh so it's this is going to be definitely a good show and hopefully i hopefully i can uh, get around at least about a good hour uh, next so and uh, i know podcasting for me is not easy since i've had to do a lot of uh, things in the background and the time to do a stream is just not easy to do but <coughs> hey uh, it's what it is, so, but hey, gotta deal with life, gotta deal with life, but anyways, uh, folks, so, I'm gonna go ahead and shoot, um, uh, my buddy Cameron over on a Discord here, so, I will get r right down and shoot them a, a call, but anyways, let's get down to it and shoot, um, a call. Alright, <clears throat> and where are... Rock punch go already. Okay, that's Okay. <clears throat> no. Uh, okay. Oh, okay, so still trying to get contact with uh with uh Cameron. So not yet with Cam. Hmm. Okay then. All right. Well, let's go ahead and give them a, another another shot right there. Uh, so looks like there must there must have been a delay on on the call. But hey, but that's all good though. But uh, we'll we will wait. But anyways, uh, how is chat? doing so far tonight so let's take a look uh let's see who else is here um uh, i do like your name nom nom norman <laughs> nom nom norman oh my god that's that's real funny <laughs> oh my god oh my goodness gracious Let's see. Hopefully, you guys can hear me okay. And I did put the um, volume not too high, so, but I really got the. Um... Cool. Alrighty. Uh, let's go ahead and give uh, my buddy Cam uh, Cameron a call again. Let's shoot. Hey, uh, Cameron, you you there? Hello, hello. Hey. <laughs> I'm not hearing you. Oh. Let me pull around here. Sure, sure. There we go. I oh. can hear you. Oh. <laughs> awesome. Oh my goodness. Hey, good. Good to have you. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Leon? Man, it's good. Good talking to you. Oh my goodness! Hey, I'm doing well. Uh, well tonight. It's just been a very busy week. Uh, it was just nonstop. Um, nonstop this week. I had to take care of family. Um, and um, yeah, and then the desk project was a huge thing this this week. So, so that didn't stop <laughs> right there. <laughs> I, I I definitely get that. It's been a busy week on this end as well. Oh gosh. Um. So how's um how's um Hudspell uh, treating you so far? So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so far, Jesus, it's hot still. Mm -hmm. uh, like there was this week where everything was nice and cool, and 
you know, in like the high 70s, low 80s, but now the humidity has rolled in and mm-hmm. it's miserable. Um, but I, I'm doing what I can. Luckily, I've got some air conditioning and some fans here set mm. up, so we're, uh, I'm good to go. Okay, good, good to hear. I mean, it's it's hot where I'm at in, in Georgia. I mean, we're actually neighbors, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, I'm sure you're experiencing similar things on that end. Oh, my God. It's it, it's been uh, hell on my on my end, but I try to stay in good doors where just air conditioning and not nothing. Uh, that way, I'm not sweating t- too much. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so that's good though. I've I have to say I wanted to do an interview with. Um, I didn't expect to do two interviews at well, all at once, but the time I have to say the timing was really good because you've um, uh, you were able to do a, a stream probably uh, interview with me after. Uh, right after probably after work you said so i think i was yep. great and then um and then i got to interview one of my favorite streamers um I- uh, ignorance which uh she uh she's around and she's um she does a lot of streaming over at her hometown of nor in norway so so i got to do that oh, wow that's yeah. very awesome it's very awesome i actually got to meet her uh, live and um, she actually is a sponsor with uh, Courser, so I got to meet her right, right there in the booth. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's yeah, that's awesome. That's it, wonderful. That it's is, always good to have those moments, right? It is um, when you meet uh, someone for the first time and you get to know them um, that for that moment. So, but thing is, I've met uh, plenty of great, good streamers on uh, Twitch. I think the, one of the first streamers I met was a uh, Lindsay L- Elise. She was in the deep, uh, deep serve. Uh, deep silver booth and uh, it was really awesome seeing her too i got to meet her twice uh first and second annual um twitch on um, twitch con so it was really awesome to see that so but yeah that's really awesome. <laughs> it is uh, so i wanted to go ahead and get start uh, get started with the interview and first of all i've um i have to say a big fan of your show love the love the show that goes on every, every week with uh rock rock punch with with um, you and will uh, on on every week and I try to come in as much as I can and definitely I love the content you guys put out out there So I think it's just really amazing. So <laughs> uh, 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 Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, we we do what we can um, Between myself and will we still have our real-life jobs and our real-life work that we have to do but um, mm-hmm. it's been going on for a while now in kind of working in mm-hmm. Doing content for rocket punch and it's been very rewarding Mm. Uh, not only just like making the content and us learning new things, but also like getting to share it and talk with you guys and everybody who does come in and watch or listens in or however people consume our content. It's been really great. It, it is. Um, I mean, definitely. I don't. I uh, here's one thing I'll say is uh, when I first met you guys, I thought. And the thing is, uh, I met you uh, during the uh, Tommy Tellerico signing. Yes, <laughs> so, it was the, um, the, yeah. the, video game, the video games live yes. concert. It mm-hmm. was it was really nice, and I have to say though, you guys are were really friendly. It was uh, not it was you and Chris I actually met uh, that yes. time. So, and and I when I heard about it, I, I that your um, your tag your name just came stuck into my mind and even and when i flew back home it stu- it still stuck in my mind when i was there and i don't and also i didn't even know how big Al- uh, Huttsville is because i it, it was like my first time and you know and the funny thing about Huttsville or our actually alabama in general like uh, a lot of people didn't never think that oh it was good it's just interesting of a state but you look into alabama and you find out Alabama is much interesting as it uh, than it is, you know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It, it, it's well, you have mm-hmm. the weird, interesting thing about that is like, and I love Alabama to death, for, for to a limit, but it, the North Alabama, and especially with all the technology and the um, everything that is up here in Huntsville, it's really like there's a huge, there's a like an interesting dichotomy in Alabama between like North and South um, Alabama, but it's still kind of one state. Um, a lot of rich history and it, it, it I always like especially in Huntsville how everybody works together um, to kind of achieve goals and do all sorts of crazy things yeah it's and it's really interesting like um, and last year uh, I got to go to Birmingham for the first time last last year and Birmingham is amazing and that's one thing I like about is people over there uh, they are really friendly like in thing is people always put Alabama 
in a, in a bad rap, you know, and I never think that way too, because I'm sure that there were so there, it's like almost similar with Georgia and we've mm-hmm. actually have a huge geek, a geek community in, uh, in Georgia, but a lot of the geek community is, it's like up in North, in North Atlanta. And uh, you definitely see some in, in the South side, but you don't ever, see, you see that much more in the North side. The way I think too, because a uh, lot you got definitely got a lot of people like uh, a lot of Asian communities, especially I've, what I've noticed is that uh, the, okay. the Korean community is a huge thing in uh, in Atlanta over there. So it's been uh, it's been eye opening when I first uh, rode up uh, rode up to Pleasant Hill Pleasant Hill Road up in Atlanta. So it was really interesting to find to find out that there was a huge Korean community a few years back. So yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. Uh, but that, that's cool. That's cool. That is really cool too. Uh, I want to just get on, um, get on with um, the fir- my first question with um, with you is how did you now how uh, who who's the founder on it? So are you the main guy that started it, or is it Chris? Or how, um, tell me about it. So founding Rocket Punch. It's very interesting. So mm-hmm. make sure I'm getting my dates right here. Mm-hmm. Back in 2015, late 2015, it was myself and Will, and um, two other people who were part of the um, team then who have stepped away now, um, Seth and Sabrina. But mm. It, it kind of boiled up to we started having conversations we you know this holiday season all these games are coming out and we were all always big gamers and mm-hmm. I, I think there was just drive and this passion for us to want to create content I know I can speak for myself um, mm-hmm. I personally wanted I, I, I wanted to contribute I, I've, I've been playing games since I was a, a child um, my dad introduced me to um, PC games I remember playing Street Fighter 2 in the original Mortal Kombat on PC for all the um, for all the young kids out there. I think it's Mortal Kombat, I know, took like three different floppy disks that you had to install, and it took like half a day. Um, this is for the original, like, eight characters only Mortal Kombat. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> but um, I've been playing games and, and growing in that for years, ever since then, and I've kind of, I remember back then, I, I really had this feeling, like, I wanted to contribute in some way to this hobby that I love and have this passion for and um, Seth and Will and Sabrina and all of us kind of get gathered together because we had very similar thoughts we said hey let's let's do this thing let's form this group let's you know and it, initially it started with just the podcast like hey let's record a gaming podcast mm-hmm. um, you know it, it, it's it's not too difficult to do mm-hmm. and it can and get us in there to kind of um, release this outlet this creative outlet that we have and and that's really how Rocket Punch started um, mm-hmm. uh, with that not only with that passion to extend our creative outlet, but also to bring a voice to like a Southern voice to the gaming realm. Cause I know one of the things we always talked about was that you never, when you see game coverage and this is not knocking anyone at all, but like when you see game coverage, it's, you know, you go to your IG and you go to your game spot, you go to your polygon, you go to wherever you need to. And those are mm-hmm. always in like other different parts of the country you have. Yeah you know, the West with California and you have the North up there with New York and everything like that. And um, we really felt there wasn't a strong gaming and geek presence here in the South. And and kind of one of the other reasons why we wanted to start Rocket Punch is to kind of become that beacon um, in the South and in this area to showcase, you know, not only to the South, but to the rest of the world kind of, you know, of course we'll have some similar thoughts, but I think to kind of add our Southern touch mm-hmm. or Southern flair to the um, gaming conversation. I think it was, a real, it was, and still is very important to us Yeah, in doing that. Yeah. And that's the thing, like um, you don't hear like a, um, like a media outlet on the South and, and definitely like when I hear about Alabama, it's not, is a pres a president of a media outlet. They're like, it's like, like you said, like California, or um, New York and uh, like or Miami because I know they're they're very big. What uh what they have three of them have in common is well one they're big cities. Uh they they have huge media out presence over there, and I and I used to live in, in Miami and Miami is like the big uh metropolitan and you got a lot of journalism over there especially in new york mm-hmm. and and it's just it's just a lot of things too but you don't ever see that in the south side so that's an interesting with uh, you guys coming along and that's why i love to see, hear new media too instead of just the old um 
I, I don't know how I put it, there, but something I just wanted to hear something different. Different. It's just like it's just the same flavor with these uh, with these folks sometimes, and I think you guys were. It's just fun to listen to too as well, and I almost feel that now. Would you ever say that um, that you were your guys are like the pioneers starting off like the geek culture in the south? So. Oh man, I I do not know if we would say <laughs> that at this point. Um, it would now would we love to kind of help push that forward i think so mm. and um I, I mean I, yeah of course and we want to as part of being that beacon is kind of seeing because we we know and especially in the time that we've started rocket punch and started talking and reaching to everybody else within the area like not even within the area but all around like there is the gaming and the culture in huntsville and alabama and georgia and the south is very strong and it i know me personally one of the things of that's always been interesting is that it almost feels like almost like islands mm -hmm. and kind of I, one of the things i would love for rocket punch to do is to kind of take those islands and bring them together and kind of propel everyone forward you know the the old adage um a rising tide lifts all ships yeah. and kind of doing that same thing with um with rocket punch and the geek and gaming culture in the south i mean we I would love more than anything. And I think, you know, to some extent we have, we have, I've seen it. Um, I, we've got a streamer group that started here in Huntsville and I see all these different people that stream actively in the area that I never knew about um, before this and never heard of until we, um, until rocket punch and the same with content creators and stuff like that in the area. And so it's, it's really been cool. And, and one of the things we, we love to see is to try and, bring everyone up like do what do the best that we can but also bring everybody else together because you know when when it should be like when one of us wins we all win right yeah so i mean yeah i, I totally agree too so i mean you guys are doing um uh you are doing great and um can be coming from me and even especially for me as a fan listen to you guys and i and now do you, yeah after many months with rock punch now have you ever have you seen the growth um coming well very well with like let's say like a youtube and in twitch when you're doing um have you have you ever uh seen uh the growth coming up on your channel um rising a bit uh week by week when you're going live each week and have you ever seen like new people coming in into your channels like how how is that for you guys so mm -hmm. oh yeah uh, we see people we see new people every week um get a chance to talk to people um, people I, when I'm streaming um, that I haven't even ran into before or known before. Um, I have so many. I've got a, all sorts of crazy stories. There was um, a time, and it actually wasn't too far off, where um, Will and I went out to eat. Um, and a, a guy we don't even know, had never even met, walked up to us and like, hey, I, um, my name is such and such. I I recognize your guys' voice. You guys do the rock punch thing, right? And I'm like, yeah, we do. And we chatted <laughs> with him for a little bit, and it's like, and, and it, it, it's weird, like experiencing that. It's it super cool, and it feels a little surreal. But that lets us know that that growth is happening. Um, we, you know, when we do events locally around our area, kind of gatherings to kind of get like-minded people together. When we do our podcast, and we we when we stream our podcast every week. There's usually one or two new people that we see in there every time. Um, and so definitely we've seen growth in what we're doing. Um, we definitely want more growth and continue to want more growth, not only with us, but um, kind of part of our mantra. We also want to see, we also want to work with other people as well. And kind of, you know, networking is, I guess, part of the game. And, <laughs> um, talking with those people, and we've learned a lot from the people that we've met and interacted with and um, hopefully they've learned some stuff from us as well but um meeting new people i think that's that's one of my favorite things is when i get to meet someone new that's to me interacting with our content for the first time or mm. um and, and, not, and not even just but also just people like when, when you or anybody else pops into our um push feeds or even if they're not interacting with us live but also like listening to our podcast and letting us know how we're doing uh, good or bad um, I we, we love that and we want that growth um, we, we strive mm. to get that input from everyone so that way we can continue to grow yeah it, 
I and it's and it's good though because um a lot of time like um I tried a this is the thing when um when I try to do a podcast with a friend of mine like one thing I've always find out um when I was work doing my pot my podcast I find out uh, the hardest thing is is when you're dealing with uh with your butt with buddies and stuff like that and you're working together all where I think it's now would you say that there's a difficulty when you're trying to deal with family and a work working family uh trying to balance the podcast together when it comes when it comes down to it too or have you um or is it not as difficult as as it is right now <clears throat> what do you say it the the work-life balance it's always a balancing act period and i think that when you look and i i'll pick on i'll pick on streamers in the, the streaming culture, even um, at this particular point, but it can apply to any content creator in actuality, like stuff like work-life balance is very important. Um, mm-hmm. It's very important to us um, when, when we came on to do this stuff, because, you know, we've got, we love making content. We love Rocket Punch. We love what we're doing here. Mm-hmm. I know for me personally, it's a great creative outlet, um, but we also have life. I've got a wife. I've got responsibilities. I can't just ditch them every time. And <laughs> Um, and it, 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 that sounds kind of mean, but one of the things we mm-hmm. we always do is we make sure that we're taken care of first. You know, if there are times where it's like, ooh, I can't make this particular thing or this came up, whatever have you. Um, and it's kind of one of the mm. intricacies of working with a team and like um, working with Will. It's like we, we talk, we communicate, and we're like, okay, Will, or, you know, let's say... Will can't cover that stream. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, I think I'm free. It may be like an hour later, but hey, I'll cover that stream or vice versa. Or mm-hmm. it may be something where, hey, we can't record the podcast mm-hmm. um, on the, on our Sunday where we normally record our podcast because there's a family event. My my great great grandmother came in from out of town and she's coming to see us. And so, oh, um, nice. And we we talk about that whether it's something where okay, let's see. Let's check our schedule. What's what can when can we do it? Because we still we hold ourselves to that standard to make sure that we're um, we get give content to people that are consuming it. But we also and it's one of the great things I love about our community is that um, everybody is very understanding about that work life balance. So if it's something where it's like, oh man, you know what, it's, we're just not going to make it this week, people are like, okay, cool, let's you know, it's okay, guys. Let's hey, we'll, we'll get some other content for you. We'll see you next week. And people are. I'm very understanding about that, and I appreciate that from our community. But um, also, that's it's very important to us. Um, we love what we're doing with Rocket Punch. We will continue to love I think, um, what we're doing with Rocket Punch. But we also want to make sure that our family and friends mm-hmm. off off the mic are taken care of as well. Absolutely too. Oh, and um, I, I'm just going to read it on the chat real quick too. So I'm going to put on uh, give a break right now. So let me take read. Uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, says uh, Cam's. A- <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, Cam's a pretty big deal, and uh, this is coming from. <laughs> then, oh, then CG uh, CG Gamer says I was at work yesterday or the day before and got recognized by someone. It's usually random, but it makes my day. That's all. That's really awesome, man. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, it, it, it's, uh, CT Gamer is Will for people who are listening don't know. Uh, oh. That is Will who's popped in chat. So okay, yeah, and let's see and yep so that's the yeah, that's the um the, okay so that's one one of the um i'm reading here so that's awesome cg gamer okay sa- sag uh scanter okay cool cool all right so i got to follow up right there so i always want to follow up a uh, chat before i continue on with uh, with it too because no yeah so always because i know you do that with your show and uh definitely love to follow up with uh, many people that come in the chat so it's definitely yeah so because um so that going back with uh with family too and I, especially with me like i i could definitely almost i definitely relate because family is a very um a very important part uh for me um so, but oh yeah also by the way guys hopefully you guys can hear me i got to pull the blue mic close to my close to me my face so hopefully that works out so but anyways hopefully i'm not in the distance so where you can't hear me guys but anyway so but back where i was gonna say but yeah family is very important to me like uh i definitely could relate because i come from a family that's very uh conservative and a lot uh, many of them like they've always they always love to 
get the family together and stick around together. I definitely understand that. Fam, when it comes to it, they, it's, they say that family is first, but they always have to attend to it too. So, and uh, that's one. That's just one thing I, I come from is people that uh, the and I come from a very uh, um, Latin family. So, <laughs> okay, okay, no, yeah. I understand that. Yeah, so I've got a lot of Latin friends so as well. So, yeah, so it's uh, and it's quite and it can be quite difficult too. So yeah, but. Uh, uh, definitely, it's um, it, it does definitely it's a challenge when you're working with um, your show and trying to stick with them uh, as well. But, but yeah, so um, def my um my other question um, hopefully I can keep it with the interview within the hour or so. So let's take a look here. It is six forty seven p.m. Okay, so and yours is like what five forty seven? Yeah, so we're like yeah, an it's hour apart. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, so one thing is um. So as far as the podcast goes right here too, let's, let's go ahead and jump on to games because I love to uh, not just talk about you, of course, and in, in your in your studio, of course. So tell me, um, since I know you still got to work with the what you got, like how do, do you get to record? Because I know when I see you live, uh, I know you don't have like a soundproof room or anything like that too. So how where do you normally record on a, on recording days? <laughs> Um, with, on our recording days, um, the <coughs> Rocket Punch Studio is uh, my office. Uh, what I actually have in my house, uh, my office is set up. That's where all the internets and all the computers and stuff are. We actually record from there. Um, so the side, if, if you guys watch us when we record our podcast, mm -hmm. that side is kind of the probably the most bare part of the room. Uh, there's a, there, If you're looking at the screen, there's a couch on our left. <laughs> and then we've got the computer screens and the TVs and stuff um, and the monitors and the computer on the other side as well. But it's our office. Um, it It is not soundproofed. Um, okay. I would, we've talked about that. I would love to actually maybe implement that. But um, because I love my wife very much, I have to be careful of what I do to the walls in here. Mm -hmm. Or she gets on to me very, very much. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, For sure. So, yeah. But um, now if let's say if um like a dream studio if we ever or at least one of these days if you had to now would you ever reboot the uh, like i guess say an underground uh bunker for your studio <laughs> um, underground bunker oh my god um underground bunker would be awesome um but any like we've talked about it in the past before and that's one of those goals when it makes sense <laughs> from a you know especially primarily from a monetary standpoint but also you know when we're able to get to that point mm -hmm. um would love to have our own space to say okay here we can uh, almost a turnkey space hey we can go over here we've got the systems we've got the equipment all we have to do is turn the light on flip the power switches sit down and rock and roll okay um, that that would be the, the dream the dream the dream <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, you gotta you gotta follow the, that dream for sure too so and uh i do ex I, I do to myself too because right now i'm just here recording in the room right now and if i could i could i'd love to have like a sound like soundproof walls nobody can hear me uh me neither would uh would my mom do but again it's like you said like i have to be careful what i say too so <laughs> so i got to i've got to say i gotta make sure that i'm because the thing is, though, those walls are not enclosed really well. So I love to have nice enclosed, <laughs> barricaded <laughs> walls. These walls, bricked. Oh, yeah. It well, it's going to be a beautiful wall. I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. And it, it's, and it's one of those big things too. Like having that dedicated space. Do we want that? Yeah, of course we do. Mm -hmm. um, but I know one of the things we've learned in doing content creation and you, you could probably ask any mm -hmm. content creator to tell you the same thing is that um make sure you know it's not even about the equipment per se make sure your content's good your make con sure your content is of the quality because people um actually we were um some of the streamers in um in our stream huntsville group i talked to um they were talking mm -hmm. about that uh this week the fact that just because you have that fancy studio and all the soundproofing rooms and the mics and the equipment mm -hmm. and the hardware and stuff doesn't necessarily mean you will be successful. It's going to make you successful and will be the con constant is the content. And so, um, you know, yes, we're we're in my office and there's not a fan yet because I've got to install it. And we have a motorized fan that barely keeps us cool during the summer. You know, yeah, that's all a big thing, but 
we also know that it, that comes with time. And as long as our con- content is there, we'll get there. For sure. And uh, it's and it's always uh, timely when, you, when you're when you trying to put it on a studio like that. So it's always like that. And I, I would... I would, for me, it's like when I'm starting content uh, for uh, starting a, a studio, and it's not going to be easy. And of course, uh, you don't want ever want to rent a studio each month, and it can can be quite expensive. Um, and there's this is a story I found out uh, from many years ago, and this is uh, something I've used to watch when I was younger. I was kind of like a uh, I was kind of like um, <laughs> a techie, but. Uh, uh, back at the i would say a little anarcho i would um back when i was younger because back then i was watching a show called dignation years ago and um it, i've heard of that show man i know that show yeah yeah so the show started out with uh with two guys uh from two guys from san Fran- san francisco uh one is uh kevin raw uh kevin rose and uh other one is albert uh Al- uh, Alex Albrecht, um, they used to be in this show called uh, Tech, um, uh, not G4, but they used to be called uh, Tech TV. Oh, yes, Tech TV. Tech- that was, that's before G4? Yeah, before G4, but before 2000, before 2005, and then they ended up switching the name to G4 TV, and I remember mm-hmm. Kevin Rose used to be on for quite for some episodes ago in 2000 then he ended up retiring the television business and go go with his company dig and uh, and that's one of the things i re- remember going to listening to him and he he managed the website dig.com and uh yes dig no dig. Dot, dig.com and uh and then dig nation to show and so and it was a very interesting uh uh a uh, very interesting kind of show that uh he even he started his podcast in an apartment room it was very hot it was just a very hot summer over there back <laughs> yeah in in starting out in a hot apartment in san francisco you know that it's it's going to be very re- <laughs> ridiculous starting starting like that and i and i totally get it too so it's not the most easiest and pleasant thing to work around with that too so um but yeah so that's like you said got you gotta keep gotta keep dreaming gotta work on that dream for sure so but oh yeah so next question um what games um are are you are you in right now too like what's the game that you're in in it at the moment (laughs) um games that i'm playing right now yes oh i just picked up bloodstained um curse of the moon Mm. or yeah, no, Ritual of the Night. That's the that's the main one that just came out. Um, I was actually a backer for that game, um, mm-hmm. so I, I've, been, I've started kind of delving into that. Um, I picked back up one of my favorite games last night, uh, Final Fantasy VII, uh, the, the original, not the remake, because mm. I'm, I'm not that cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, realizing that I hadn't played that game in almost two decades, wow. um, which is yeah, yeah, it, it, exactly. Ever since it came out. Um, Destiny 2 has been, I've really enjoyed the message that um, Bungie has been kind of giving out uh, with Destiny 2 and a lot of the updates that they've been doing for um, the player base, especially leading into their new expansion, Shadowkeep, uh, this fall. So I've actually been jumping back into Destiny 2, um, and I've, um, I want to get back in. (laughs) I'm really enjoying that. Um, Why than that? There, I'm, I don't know for the life of me. There's one game on the tip of my tongue that I remember. Just that one game, <laughs> it, and it, it's like, like I, I was playing it a lot. Oh, okay, no, I remember what it is now. So, mm-hmm. if no one listened to any of the games that I talked about, there is one game that I have really fallen in love with lately, and that is uh, the Outer Wilds. Oh, um, mm. it, do you, I don't know if you know that game. Uh, Leon, but I, it's I do not know. No, Mm-mm. the gist of it. Think of like Astro Near meets Groundhog Day, <laughs> almost in a sense. Like it is, uh, it's a very like mystery space exploration game where you're trying to figure out um, this this issue. There's basically a time loop. You're stuck in a time loop, mm-hmm. and you're um basically trying to explore the solar system 
finding these clues as to why this time loop is happening and maybe trying to figure out a way to stop it. And it's, we streamed it, uh, I know I streamed it Wednesday and I've been streaming it probably like every week for the last couple of months and it's, or last couple of weeks and ooh man, that game has really got me. Oh my goodness. That's a really nice, um, so how do, oh man, I, I'm gonna have to look into, look into that game. So, um, so um, the game is Alder, Outer Wilds. Wild, Alder Wilds. Okay. Oh, yeah. damn. Uh, the blue mic is in the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it, I think it's made. I think the developer is Mobius Games. If memory serves me right, yes, it is. Hmm. Okay. Gotcha. All right. I'll I'll have to look that up. In fact, I'm going to put place that on my notepad. So, yeah. So that's going to be. Uh, yeah, um, that is, that is um, Cameron's thumbs up, seals of approval. Uh, I, I, I'm enjoying every bit of that game. I think it's it's a great. I love my action games, but it's a great change of pace for my action and shooting people. So, mm. nice, nice. Okay, well, I'll, I'll look. I'll look that up after the podcast and uh, take a look into it too. So, and now I know Rocket Punch is your main, like your main uh, show that you do. Now, how many days a week? Uh, gosh, I forgot. Is it like three days a week now? For you or the um the stream uh yeah the stream that's correct um the uh, rock uh, kind of what we brand as rocket punch live which is our streaming effort mm -hmm. um we stream definitely sundays at 8 p.m so mm -hmm. that is one day there and then depending on our schedule mm -hmm. it's a minimum of um two days anytime between tuesday and friday tuesday um, and friday. we okay. we try and keep it consistent but as we kind of talked about earlier, real life can get in the way. So mm -hmm. um, we know that people, I know the last couple of weeks we've, we've been doing Wednesdays and Thursdays. Um, and actually, um, mm -hmm. uh, a minimum two, because sometimes we'll throw an extra day in there. I think actually, as we're recording this tonight, uh, Will's going to be streaming um, as has Creed Odyssey tonight as well. So that'll be an extra kind of third day in the bucket. But that's generally our schedule when we stream. Oh, okay. Mm. And uh, so going back in the chat, it's a, so CG Gamer says, get him real hard, Leon, <laughs> Leon the Great. <laughs> of, of course he would. Of course he would. <laughs> yeah, I will. Uh, I will. Uh, will. So <laughs> got it. Got it. <laughs> uh, so I mean, that's that's one of the things like um, I, know I did subscribe to Southern Geek on on uh, iTunes. And Southern Geek, and this is interesting because uh, Rocket Punch is like the main cha main channel or or channel slash podcast uh, for video games. But then you turned uh, Southern Geek into like a tech commentary, manga, video games, and comics, and and that's what I like as well too because um, I like that right there too. Now, uh, besides both both of them, like you got Rocket Punch Go, then Southern Geek. Um, mm -hmm. now for those of my viewers that are still here, uh, explain uh, a little bit about Southern, uh, Southern Geek for those that don't know. <clears throat> yeah, no problem. So whenever we talk about Rocket Punch as a whole, we talk, you know, we are here to showcase geek and gaming culture in the South. Mm -hmm. Um, when we talked about kind of redoing our shows to try and better emphasize that point, the Rocket Punch cast is our gaming side. That's mm -hmm. always been there. That continues to be there. That's quite popular from what I understand. Mm -hmm. um, what, but we wanted something to hit that geek part and the geek culture part. And so that's why we um, created Southern Geek to kind of, because we're like you, Leon. We we love gaming, but mm -hmm. we also love anime. We yes. love manga. We love tech. We love movies. We love TV. Mm -hmm. And we love talk. We want to talk about those too, because we, we figured out like we really don't have an outlet for those. And so southern geek is that side that is where we get a chance to talk about our you know the latest in tech the um latest anime stuff that's coming out mm -hmm. the um latest movies or tv shows that we're talking about um it's a great place whenever like new movies come out geeky movies like a lot of marvel movies and stuff when endgame came out we did a spoiler cast on southern geek as well for that and so that's kind of that's basically what Southern Geek is. So basically, take the Rocket Punch cast, but instead of gaming stuff, yeah, it's everything else. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, that, that's good though. We got this uh, Versify too. So I mean, I I didn't grow up just um, being a gamer. Like I I was a technology ner nerd when I was younger. Um, I, it started in middle school for me. So I mean, mm -hmm. I bought a lot. It lived for Lewins. Let's. I, mean, I would say Bill Gates would, would have been one of my influence because that's how I got my exposure with um, 
with Windows. But then, then later, I got to read about tons of ideas. What people, what like people like uh, big big names like Michael Dell, um, uh, mm-hmm. t- and all these people in the tech world. Like what all these guys had in common was uh, common was an idea uh, of technology, and that was really inspiring too. And 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 of course, then later I got le- in into apple stuff like the thing is i never owned an apple when i was uh when i was younger Uh, (laughs) i'm with you on that one i never did but i only used an apple throughout my elementary school when the school when the school system back in south florida apply um supplied that to younger children at at the time so that i believe what was that model apple g3 yeah i believe the g3 or the g4 at the time I remember those. We had those in my middle school too. The um, the colored ones. Oh yes, they, yep. Uh, it, they it, were in our it, library. It was, and that was like the first computers to have um, internet. One of the first Apple computers to have internet com- uh, compa- compatibility. What I remember back then too. So, and that was really uh, my exposure, my first time exposure to Apple. But then later, Apple didn't got interested. Interesting when I when I was in high school, I remember. In high school, I was a young back then. I remember this young, you know, this little device called Apple Shuffle, <laughs> and I, and I said to the uh, to yes. one of the guys in high school, I said, "What is what is that uh, little device?" I was like, "Oh, this no, this is a a five twelve megabyte um uh, iPod right here. You just store your music over there, listen to all your tunes right there." It's like really run that little thing right there. I was like, "Yeah, this is what it is." So <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> Yeah, that's cool. I, I had, yeah, I think I've had like two or three shuffles. Wow, two or three um, shuffles in, in my time. So I've, I've, those are small little things. Actually, my probably if I look around my office hard enough, I could probably find one or two of them. Yeah, um, but those are awesome little devices for mm-hmm. sure. It is, and um, and now the way I've gotten to listening in your podcast is the iPod the iPod classic and I in fact I've been listening to it in this device and for those um, that are seeing this device I'm gonna ha- show it on the cam camera right here so iPod classic uh, so got all the nice i podcasts like Bruce Lee podcasts uh, let's take a look over here wow. Joe Rogan experience which I uh, want to listen to here and there the Tim Ferriss show is one of my one of my top favorites including you are in my top list right there so Tim Ferriss is great, great inspiration right there so and and also funny enough i've been catching up with some russian languages so that's interesting <laughs> yeah so russian and um and i do want to try Nor- norwegian so something about Nor- norway um uh, is pretty inspiring and i never tried um norwegian so that's kind of that's something on my list mm-hmm. but uh, i know didn't this november i'm going to catch up with uh, spanish because i have a half sister that lives in the dominican republic funny enough so <laughs> yeah so um yeah trying to get catch up and the thing about when you live in another state and one lives in another country in another country that you pretty much have a barrier so which sucks because so so that's why i have uh man that's a great beauty about podcasting so you learn a lot about podcasting podcasts so it's always great to have that there and even when podcast came out around 2005 Mm-hmm. Um, podcasting it, it really changed a lot of things where it became such a new avenue and especially even outside of television and especially with technology and that's what I liked about it too uh, and you're also a comic book fan right? <clears throat> yes oh, Okay. very very in, in especially Marvel big uh, comic book fan there wow Go- comic book fan um, favorite superhero oh Jesus you would ask me this um <laughs> Okay, favorite superhero is uh, Spider-Man. Mm. Uh, but as I've 100%, I remember when I was in elementary and middle school and going to the grocery store with my mom. Mm. And um, for again, for, I'm aging myself a little bit. But for some of the older people there, um, we went into like the CVS pharmacy and on the mag- the magazine racks when they actually had those, um, there were... Um, comics there and i remember like every time we went i asked my mom like hey there's a spider-man comic i want to read this i want to read this um i've been a a big spider-man fan ever since um if the in more recent times as as i've expanded my comic and marvel portfolio um captain america has also been is very high on that list as Mm. well um i just i i I like what he represents and and especially the um 
MCU version of Captain America. I've really enjoyed watching uh, Chris Evans do his thing on the screen and kind of portray that character um, as well. But it, it, if you, if I'm picking one, it's Spider Man all all the way. I love the the duality that he has to deal with that I think that not other superheroes really have to deal with as far as keeping your your superhero life and your regular life in oh. check. Oh yeah, you got to so. And Spider Man, I grew I grew with Spider Man too. Uh, I would say I was like uh, one of those one of those young kids that got up uh, up uh, possessed with Spider Man. So it was a great, it was a great mm-hmm. exper- a childhood, uh, no doubt. Since I've um, I I was one of the, um, very fortunate to pick up a lot of uh, Spider Man comic books. Uh, I I have to say though I did uh, collect a uh, good amount of Spider Man, but Fantastic Four was a, a huge thing when I was younger. Um, and I I swear to God, and this is something a lot of people look to me and ask me a lot. To say, man, you definitely look like Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, 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 you, if you get the hair a certain way, yeah, <laughs> shave up the beard a certain point, yeah, we you could do that. We could rock that. We well, could rock that, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I have, I have to say though, like when I watched X Men for the first time when I was younger, and my dad took me to the theaters, and my my dad when my when my dad was around at the time, I remember he took he would take me to the theaters like every other week, and I know. X Men One uh, back in the two thousand when it was released, it was like it was one of the exposure to X Men uh, actually, and then it ended up uh, wanting me to look into uh, older X Men comics. But when time went on, right there too. So X Men was an exposure, but I definitely love the Wolverine character as well. But uh, I, but Deadpool was a, uh, was a later exposure, so I got I was very very late in the game. Even though Deadpool was a character back in the late eighties, uh, done by the artist Todd McFarlane when the, he did when he was in Marvel back then so <laughs> yeah oh yeah 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 so um so it was a, it was a cool ex- uh, experience even for both of us growing up in the comic book world so and I always say the people since I know you already said Marvel already so I don't have to ask you Marvel or DC I know Marvel is your your Mar- 1000 percent Marvel <laughs> and it's it is nothing against DC mm-hmm. if for me it's just I like I always, I think I tell people, like, I compare it this way, like, DC or, like, superheroes in the sense of, like, Mm -hmm. almost, I don't want to say gods, but, like, they're very much on a, like, when you're a superhero, you there's a very huge gap, but with Marvel, there's a human element that really speaks to me, uh, that every, all those characters in that world has, you know, even though they're superheroes, when they take off that costume, they're still regular people, and they have to deal with regular problems, and I think their comics showcase that a little bit more than um, in the Mm -hmm. DC yeah and that's a that's a cool thing because uh thing what i liked about marvel is that they you see the personality behind them you know and you know they're human they're they got the regular lives so just like like us and and that's the thing thing we've uh we guys have we have such a challenge right there too so and um like even especially i'm a marvel guy and i have to say though there are some times i do like some dc comics as well so i mean i love the uh, the Batman stories, like the Dark Knight stories, the Superman stories as well. So it's mm-hmm. really, it's really my niche right there too. Like, no, recently, um, it was a few months back. I went to see, uh, Sh- Shazam, uh, a few a few months ago. Oh yeah, yeah. I that actually was, enjoyed I, it. I like that. Yeah, yeah, I did like that as well. Yeah, I enjoyed the movie, and it wasn't really bad at all too. Like I know one of my friends said that uh, DC. Is gonna end up becoming the next um, next Marvel uh, because they because the way they're competing with Marvel with movies. I don't know. Like how do, how do you think about that? The people saying that well DC is doing movies better than Marvel. How how could you uh how what will you say with a uh, statement like that too? Do you think that Marvel is kind of in a dip right there where people are kind of criticizing uh Marvel throughout the time where there's been people with mixed reactions with um. Uh, Captain Marvel. It it. I think the big thing that Marvel's in right as far as like with the um their mm-hmm. movies and the universe is that, um, mm-hmm. they, again, and I think it's kind of Marvel's mantra: they're mm-hmm. superhero movies, but they're not superhero movies in the sense of like, they take a theme like Ant Man was mm-hmm. a, very, a very much like a heist movie, mm-hmm. but with superheroes. Um, Captain America was like a, a kind of a military picturesque movie, but mm-hmm. with superheroes, and um, I think that's what's spoken a lot to people um, uh, with those. For for me, and I don't, 
I enjoy the um, I enjoy the DC movies that have come out. Uh, Wonder Woman's been great. Mm -hmm. um, I actually really liked Justice League. I'm glad you know it, there were some parts in there. I was like, eh. mm -hmm. um, but I, I liked the Justice League. Um, and Aquaman was just freaking awesome. But it, I think that it, I think for DC, me personally looking at it is, I think maybe they tried rushing too much. They saw the success from Marvel, and they wanted to jump on that that bus and you know everybody wants to to try and see you know oh we've got dc fans too let's try and get them up on there as well but uh, mm -hmm. i don't think without taking in consideration kind of that translation in from comics to um actual live action and movies and whatnot and kind of marvel took its time building the each character up until they came together and then they would break apart and build new characters up and then they would come together um, and so you like you, after what I think twenty three movies if I'm not mistaken twenty two mm -hmm. twenty three something like that something um, like we, that yeah. we, mm -hmm. all those characters I mean I didn't I knew who Guardians of the Galaxy was I'm like uh, we'll see how this goes I don't know if anybody's gonna care about a talking raccoon in a tree <laughs> that just says three words all the whole time um, and yet um, mm -hmm. here we are now where Guardians is probably one of the more popular movies but um, even with Captain Marvel you know me personally being a Marvel fan loving the MCU I. I thought Captain Marvel was great. I thought it was fun. Mm -hmm. Is it was it their best movie in the MCU? No. No. Okay. It's just flat out no. Um, but I don't for kind of if people are saying that, you know, oh, Captain Marvel, blah blah blah, I think the big thing saying is that Yeah. You know, not every movie's gonna be a hit. There are some downer movies looking at Thor the Dark World. Um but <laughs> it's mm -hmm. the thing that even even a low point in the MCU is pretty high on the overall scale mm. of superhero movies in general. And I think that as I want to see DC movies succeed, and one of the things I would hope, mm -hmm. I hope that like some of the bumps in the road they've had with their movies doesn't discourage them. Like I think, and I think they started to learn it from what I've watched is that take the time, build the characters up. When you build the characters and you make people care about the characters, yeah. they will care about when these characters come together. Mm -hmm. um, and I hope that DC continues to do that because I, I want to see some Aquaman. I want to see I want to see a Green Lantern movie so I can wash away that horrible Ryan Reynolds <laughs> <laughs> version out of my mind. Um, yeah. and not, not, not on at all on Ryan Reynolds' part because he did his best with what he got. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, with all that stuff, I'm, I'm really interested to see what they do with the Batman, the next Batman movie coming up, um, especially with the Batman, because there have been way too many movies to count with Batman. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think going back in like the late 80s Batman with uh, uh, Michael Keaton. Yeah, so it's uh, there, so there's been a lot of not actually not. It actually just goes back a little bit further. Actually, Matt, uh, Adam West. So there's been a lot of shows and TV movies about Batman. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but uh, it's gonna be like you, uh, like you mentioned, it's gonna be hard. To, who's gonna who's gonna play as Batman since we've already had a uh, Ben? Uh, I was gonna say Ben Stiller. No, it's Ben Affleck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can't now really imagine Ben Stiller playing <laughs> in the role. Oh, 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 oh God, oh, gosh, that I was... took a huge left turn. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right oh heavens well that's that is really funny and um by the way um let's take a look over here oh let's see uh and i'm reading in chat so cg gamer says Woot, i don't know how someone can think dc is better at cinematically they have had some good movies and they don't really join them together with the same quality yeah so i would definitely agree with that uh i mean they're very different franchises so it's hard to say though and yeah and i think i think they've nailed it like mm -hmm. I think they nailed it with Wonder Woman. I think they nailed it with Aquaman. And again, I think it's back to when they started realizing, hey, let's build up the characters, make them people that they can mm -hmm. care about, and then we bring them all together. So, you know, it, you know, people people forget it's it's 2019 right now. Let's yeah. take it back to 20, 2007, 2006. People forget nobody cared about Iron Man. Nobody cared about Captain America. Mm -hmm. Nobody cared about Thor yeah. until those movies were released and they took that care in making those characters. And now, you know, people love Iron Man and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, Captain America's got the Captain America shirts walking all around here. And, uh, you know, it, it even again, back to the Guardians of the Galaxy, mm -hmm. uh, people didn't even know that in this realm of comic books, there's a raccoon that talks and likes big guns. <laughs> 
Yes. And so, but here we are now. So here we are. I mean, things have changed, and there are uh, good turns for the better, for sure. So, and um, in let and also uh, before I continue reading chat, so uh, before I uh, fi uh, finish like at least three more questions, uh, before uh, ending this. So since we're now almost past the hour, I want to just say, uh, nom nom Norman, thanks for the follow, and then CT Gamer, thank thank you as well and then the other one sig got there oh thanks for the follow as well and by the way apologize i don't hear any notifications on it too i'm trying to fix that up on my video feed so that will be fixed uh, pretty soon on my next uh interviews and my next live episode so coming up moving forward too so i'm trying to work it with obs as best as i can so got which i've got to learn how to do it since i'm managing all this on my own so <laughs> yeah quite of a difficult process mm -hmm. hey we're, we're here to help you yeah. let us know we, we we know a lot of people and a lot of resources as well so we can always help whenever oh. we can oh thank you i'll i'll ask you is uh um i'll ask you when uh when i need to have so but i do appreciate it though pre pretty much so let's see here nom noms questions so i'll say he says i prefer dc tv shows i do like the tv shows there i think they've been well produced um now green arrow i do like green arrow myself and so he continues on compared mm -hmm. against the marvel ones that's fair the t and tg gamer says fair that's fair the tv shows from marvel haven't been the best so yeah i mean they've been okay it i yeah but still not the best though i would agree uh, yes, I agree. Yeah, a Agents of Shield is okay. Uh, got a little whack in the recent seasons. <laughs> really, <laughs> I had no idea. Well, I haven't watched. Uh, I haven't watched Agents of Shield, so I don't know about it too. Uh, we'll see how it goes uh, once the Disney TV service once they once they launch, uh, hopefully. So, and I actually heard about you talk about that too. So yeah, so that was an interesting episode with you and Will talking about the TV service. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's going to be really interesting because Disney, probably in the entertainment entertainment medium right now, is a powerhouse, and to them to have all the Marvel and the Star Wars mm -hmm. and all these very very popular brands right now under one house is going to be very interesting to see how that turns out. Mm, yeah, it is. I mean, they're well, they're a huge column. Uh, how how do I say? It? It's a conglomerate of animation at this point too, and. Uh, and I know that this is kind of the thing that's going to kind of bother some people. Like, uh, though they're live, uh, they're live stuff like, uh, um, they're live action, they're live movies, uh, like the Beauty and the Beast, um, mm -hmm. Al Aladdin. I have not seen Aladdin. I, that's something I, I will not either. Though, but some people will end up bringing about, about how, uh it's not as great as the animation but and that's an argument i will i would fairly agree because i always loved the animation when i was a young a, a young boy so i mean for me that's uh something i will have to see uh about it and give my give my take on it too once i watch yeah. it yeah so i really i really enjoy aladdin so I, I, and i'm actually i'm excited to see what the live action version does um, I just I gotta get a chance to get my wife to go out there and see it. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, my I mean, I've been a Disney fan for when I was younger. So I mean, hopefully, I, that doesn't bother me when I see it because I know I hate to read the comments and somehow they love to bring their politics into the mix. And I'm like, come on, guys, just it's a movie. Let's uh, <laughs> let's chill chill down for a moment too. So, and I know that it's not the same, but they try to make it as best as they can. You know, when it's produced. So. Um, when it comes down, when it comes down to movies like that too, Air, is every movie going to be great uh, or perfect? Not really. They, a lot of producers yeah. try to as best as they can too. So that's and that's how I see see a comparison too. Because I know the movie I'm looking forward to coming up. Um, it this is with Sam Sam Raimi. Um, have you heard about the movie called Crawl? Uh, no, I have not. Well, he's uh, done uh, some stuff with um, like with the red directions like the uh, evil dead don't breathe um that which was a recent movie back a couple of years ago uh but i'd say check uh check it out uh the trailer uh called crawl uh you can look up on youtube it's yeah it's an interesting take so pretty much it's a young a woman trying to find the father and pretty much she uh it, the narrative behind it 
and it's not much of a spoiler. So pretty much she has to battle al <laughs> an alligator. <laughs> okay, all right, I'm in, I'm in. Cold, done. Yeah, so <laughs> it's uh, it's wild too. So if you love uh, thrillers, uh, you guys got to see uh, Crawl. And actually, that kind of brought my attention. So I'm actually I'm looking forward to it. So, uh, so three more questions and uh and also i'd love to say uh again thank you for taking the time to uh to do this so and i know it's oh, no problem yeah so it's uh, wonderful too and also guys um if you're liking the podcast um if yeah uh, if you like to see anyone else please let me know um i was gonna say the comments below but this is not youtube this is twitch but anyways if, if you want to see me interview anyone else uh hit put uh put down the, on the chat below and I'll, I'll read it further and i'll take uh which ones i'll be considering in interviews in the future which ones i'll do like every fridays you know, if you like to see that go by go ahead by all means but uh so so comics right there uh we've talked about comics uh a little bit about technology uh games we've talked about but i will get end up uh coming back to games because it, and i know e3 just passed a f about a week ago and what was your take about e e3 and how do you like e3 oh my take on e3 and how i like e3 um e3 this for 2019 i'll give you my take for this year and then my overall thoughts on e3 okay 2019 i think was great a lot of awesome and cool games um this year mm -hmm. i feel from what i've gathered taking the temperature was very much a um transitionary year if i may say um mm -hmm. everybody i think is holding their stuff their big mm -hmm. guns the yes. super big guns until um next year when i'm pretty sure we're gonna get uh, the new playstation and microsoft consoles revealed at mm -hmm. some point in that time and i think that's what um everybody's kind of holding on as far as like big new titles i mean i, I swear what is rockstar doing um mm. it's been years and i i swear i thought they were gonna say something this year but um, um if regardless i love the games um i'm a big final fantasy 7 fan mm -hmm. one of my favorite games of all time actually seeing the remake in action was super awesome um cyberpunk 2077 and keanu reeves mm -hmm mind-blowing um all even some of the the smaller games that um kind of came and went uh 12 minutes an mm. xbox's game conference that was super cool um it is oh. fantasy star online 2 oh my god yeah it's, it's coming <laughs> finally yeah. <laughs> um, yeah over to the west it's it was it was a really great year i loved all the games that i saw but i think there wasn't like the big like gut punch like bomb drops mm -hmm. and i think that and it's not a bad thing i think that that's they're holding the cards until next year because they want to entice and get these people to jump on the um, next gen bandwagon but um right the as far as e3 overall i think uh E3 is a great conference. Um, <laughs> spoilers. Uh, uh, I am going to do my best. I actually want to go to E3 next year. Mm. Um, I want to do my best to try and see if I can get um, playing that out and see if maybe myself. I don't know if Will wants to go. We'll 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 ask him later. Oh, um, that'd be nice, <laughs> dude. To actually go there and do coverage there. Um, that would be nice. But yeah. It E3. I think E3 is great. E3 is like gamers Christmas. Um, but I think, and I love it. It's like waking up like, oh, man, I can't wait to see what new games are going to get released. Um, I think mm -hmm. that some things need to change, though. I think mm -hmm. to a certain point, E3 needs to evolve. Um, mm -hmm. and even just taking one example yeah. was um, this year, we were getting leaks about games like a week or two before E3 even started. Mm. And I think as excited as I was for E3, I think that kind of, you know, takes a little steam out of the E3 hype train. Yeah. And I, it, a part of that is really just we're in 2019 now. When it was 2009, 2010, mm -hmm. we could, you know, the internet wasn't as prevalent. We, you know, YouTube wasn't as big of a thing it is, as it is. Twitch yep. was, I think. Uh, Twitch. Uh oh. And uh, oh, you're breaking up. 
Oh, Cameron, uh, you're breaking up. Oh, Cameron? Oh, hey, you're breaking up. Oh. There we go. Um, I'm looking at voice connect connector right now. Let's take a look. Okay, now it's it looks like it's uh, back up now. Um, let's hear you again. I can hear you guys just fine. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, you were just breaking up for a moment, so. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, you were saying um, you, it was like thirty sec. Um, let's go. Let's um, start over like thirty seconds ago. Uh, you were saying about okay. YouTube. Mm -hmm. Well, no, like the um, mm -hmm. the fact that the leaks, E three leaks, were coming out like weeks before E three actually started, and I think that took a little bit of a wind out of the sails of uh, some of those announcements. Mm -hmm. um, that you know, as as great as the announcements and stuff were, I would have lo loved even more if they were talked about without knowing about them ahead of time. And it, right. that's just because of the times. We're in 2019 now. You go back a couple of years, and YouTube and Twitch weren't as prevalent. Mm -hmm. We weren't uh, people weren't actively streaming, and there wasn't this like mm -hmm. we weren't so close. And I put those with quotes um, mm -hmm. with the media and at E3, where now we can actually watch the conferences live. When I know Will and I have talked about on the podcast before, we remember like 10, 15 years ago when you had to wait until the next EGM monthly oh. for July before you even knew what got announced at um, mm -hmm. E3. And I think um, that's something, and I don't know if that's necessarily an E3 problem, but mm -hmm. like find some way to try and keep a tighter lid on those and, and maybe kind of take some onus on us as gamers to maybe like, hey, it's only a week away. Let's kind of hold back on trying to get the leaks and let's just, you know, let's wait and see. Let's get excited. Yeah. Um, but I also think from from E3 itself, I think the show needs to figure out how it's how it handles like press and then consumers because I know, especially from press and from everybody, like yeah. one of the big things, like you go to these conferences and it's huge every year. It is, and it's you know mm -hmm. you're waiting in a line for three hours just to get a taste of Final Fantasy VII remake um, yeah. because and, and then now. Um, media outlets and other people that are actually trying to cover this for their job and their work they're getting delayed because of people waiting in line i think e3 is trying to sort that out because that i get you know e3 people forget e3 has always been mm -hmm. first and foremost a consumer not a consumer but like a trade show a trade been, show. you know yeah back in the day it was designed for um like all the business talk that people groan about like that's what the show was way back in the day and so mm -hmm seeing that on a stage isn't bad we, yeah. i understand it but um especially now that it is being more consumer focused they're letting more consumers in mm -hmm. and people just don't want to see that it kind of finding that balance between consumers and um the business side of things and the business side of things okay mm, yeah i would uh, i'll definitely agree yeah, and especially with when uh I remember it back when it was just more business oriented and I didn't even know that it was uh, now available for the public until like a few years ago. And I thought they had just the same traditions with uh, E3 and, uh, but, uh, that's cool though. But if you end up going ne next year, hopefully it, uh, I have enough money saved and I'll probably go, go out with you guys if that's, uh, the case next year. So that way I can put my reporting and, and do that for my podcast because something that's something i want to do and grow in my show is to do like live cover live coverages like uh like mm -hmm. like like citizen like uh coverages like i can just go out to a camera and do live live takes though though the only thing is though uh wi-fi is going to be crowded on the building so it's going to be hard to do like live streaming because i went to yeah germany and my god the conf the conf wi-fi conference is horrible <laughs> oh i could only imagine oh my gosh and um it's not it, and it wasn't great great too so especially if you end up doing live coverages you may have to end up at uh, depending like a 4g uh going through a 4g coverage with it too spo so you have you have to consider the fact that um you may have to save up like extra day like over like a mobile hotspot if you ever do like live footage so it'd be in very interesting how you you and will will do it too so i don't know who's going to hold the camera probably will will and you may do the reporting or maybe vice versa so <laughs> yeah, yeah we, 
we figure it out. Uh, you know, we're we're both really good at planning and execution. That's one thing I know we've always been good at. But it's it's always been a dream of mine, like to actually get a chance to go to E3. And I think mm-hmm. going next year is probably one of the best times to go because yeah. new new consoles announced. It's going to be a lot of new awesome games being shown. Too. I, I yeah, I, I agree. Um, now, one thing about it too, though, Sony didn't have. You remember in E3, like Sony didn't have their press. And um, there were a lot of people suspect that uh, a lot of people thought uh, they they didn't do they had their own press this year because uh, they were trying to hold back because of Final uh, not Final Fantasy but of, of PlayStation Five uh, in mind that they had as a secret plan that Sony has now. Do you think that that would have been the case of this year's E3 or what? What your take on on that with Sony not having their own press right there? <laughs> Um, I 100% think, believe that one of the main reasons Sony did mm-hmm. not do the show is because they had nothing new to show. Mm-hmm. I know I, I might get on my soapbox here. Mm-hmm. I, I love gamers. I love the gamer culture, but mm-hmm. you know, and I'm, I'm part of that culture. But I think sometimes you know we're always ravenous for brand new things, mm-hmm. and. As especially from the show last year in 2018 from Sony, which the demos and stuff were great, they mm-hmm. were exceptional, but yeah, their kind of show overall was a little disjointed, um, and kind of execution and like moving. They had to, they were trying to move people and it was ridiculous, but um, oh, I think Sony coming here in 2019, it's like, look, we're the next gen is next year. Do they really want to spend the time sprinkling a few new announcements in E3? Um, and then try to front load it with other games that people have seen three, four times already in shows past yeah. that are coming up within the year. Or do they want to say, hey, let's pull out. We will be back. You know, we're, we're not going to be this year. And I guess there's still no guarantee they might be there next year, especially with their state of play show. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, I, I understand it and I respect it. And I'm sure that another reason for them not being there too is money. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, Sony and Microsoft have like two of the biggest presences on the E3 show floor. Yes. And so you have to imagine that costs a lot of money. So think about all the money that Sony saved, especially if they didn't have anything like big groundbreaking announcements by not being at E3 this year. Yeah. Um, I think so too. So, mm-hmm. yeah, the con- pre- press conference can be quite high. And plus, the, their other divisions are aren't doing as well like what i've noticed with like the technical vision and now the one like sony the playstation division is is one of the best divisions with uh sony going forward right now too and so that's why i see that they're uh it's doing great with the gaming division but just not the other divisions like the computers the portable mp3s and that's been the low ca- low case with sony right now too and so it's been a stagnation go uh with with sony as a company right there so i know that there it sony is not being stopped they're still growing you know as as mm-hmm. a gaming division so it's uh, it's good that they didn't do it this year and probably waiting until the 2020s hit so so i do i do say so it is pretty smart for them to do uh just that and just continue where they where they're at right now too so yeah, yeah. and i think that it kind of the the stuff from what sony not being here and xbox mm-hmm. and what they showed and getting people hyped mm-hmm. especially for game pass and some of their services it things will really come to a head next year i i, I will that's i'll leave that at that like it's going to be I think E3 next year will be very, very big. Very big. Yeah. At the very minimum between those two. Yeah. I mean, and this is my future prediction with E3. Like, uh, I mean, we're definitely going to see a lot of um, VR coming in the works. Uh, and then, like, VR is going to be a huge thing. Um, now, I've always said about Google Sata before, though I don't think it's going to be the biggest with Google Sata. I mean, it's going to be a hard, it's going to be a hard line with Google Sata, even though they're a big company, Google. Now, can mm-hmm. they can they do it? I think they can. But then again, a lot of people are not going to embrace the cloud technology as fast as people uh, as fast as many people will just jump into it too as well because there's the monthly cost to it. So you have to consider now you're now also you're playing you're spending on the console, but then you have to spend like what ten ten month, bucks a month, which is a little there's a um, lot more than that too as well. So so there's well, always that. Mm-hmm. The Google Stadia and the streaming thing it yeah. actually. It could succeed. I think there are a couple of kind of mm-hmm. just bigger, big questions that haven't been answered yet. I know Will and I talked the other day about like 
the, one of the big questions are data caps for mm -hmm. people that still have to deal with that. Like, how mm -hmm. is it going to affect them? Mm -hmm. uh, it, but like, as far as the barrier to entry, it is definitely going to be lower. I mean, the Founders Edition right now to get in early is $130 and you get a Chromecast, you get a controller, mm -hmm. you get three months of Google Stadia, you get another three months for a friend, you get the Destiny full on game experience up to Shadow Keep mm -hmm. um, included. And so that that's a pretty good deal for 130. But like with, you know, I think we're getting to that point where as well where um, we're getting a lot of subscription services like 999 it's not bad but then i think we're at this point now where mm -hmm. people are starting to look at you know netflix and hulu amazon prime and um google stadia and whatever x is going to cost and dot 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 and then it, you know it, stuff starts to add up again and um yeah. i think i think google stadia can be successful mm -hmm. um i think they've got to this is one of those things where you have to show people mm -hmm show it to people people must get it in their hands They're like yeah i think one of the best things they could do is to um go you know go to physical stores like best buys and game stops and actually put a booth in there and say hey try it with your try it yourself mm. on their wi-fi here or their internet connection and see for yourself mm. okay yeah uh so i mean it's all about the just the hands-on experience so you've had to experience first before ever going to it like if there was a demo let's say if gamestop had a, a state uh, uh cool sad demo I'll, I would try it i'll be open to trying that too so i won't say no right away but there's always a possibility for sure so yeah um, they, they have to find it in it and actually if and mm -hmm. that's for early adopters. I always keep forgetting, like, in 2020, it will be free. So if you if you have a lower connection and you can only stream 1080p, yeah. it will be free. You could go on here and try it, no cost, and you'll get a 1080p experience. So I'm sure they'll push that as well because I think it, for stuff like this, mm -hmm. people are going to be skeptical until they get it in their hands. And once they get it in their hands, they, then they'll be able to decide for themselves if they like it or not okay yeah um i'm with you so but let well we'll see though you know i know e3 had uh has passed and computech is uh i've i talked about this uh a little bit of my show uh that if well computex was something a highlight of uh, my list i will go to computex and type and taipei so that's something i will do uh in the in the okay, future awesome. so that would be really really awesome but again type going a flight trip into pay is really expensive so you have to consider the cost and the hotels uh adding all that together so that's something in my list i will do one of these days myself but but who knows so <laughs> yeah yeah god. one day one day god knows for sure but all right well i definitely want to go ahead and uh keep keep the uh interview nice and short so let's uh let's take a look here so ct gamer says very cool yep so very very cool and um so and also you guys i didn't never expect to have so many people on the on the chat and and also a lot of people coming here and watching here but anyways this this is uh quite fun i haven't had uh uh two people in one day so yeah and uh normally i would have had uh two separate people in stream because normally i would end up having like more of a uh joe rogan <laughs> like more of a joe rogan experience where i have okay. i get into a two-hour conversation just talking shit and may i just having that <laughs> <laughs> hey look i'm i'm always down for those at any time you let me know <laughs> uh, for sure too and and that, that would have been a that would be a great experience too but all, that's something i love um i love it and plus the and also the chat is really interactive so thank you guys for uh, sticking around and i can't believe there's still people sticking around after uh, after over an hour <laughs> hour too because you I, you would have think that people would have just not stuck around and they would have been bored it's like all right that's it I'm watching Netflix. Let's see what's on. <laughs> so that's the attention. I never think that the attention will stay in with so many people. So it's been it's pretty cool to see that with so many people staying staying around too. I mean, I could stay for a good amount of hours and still still um, stay up though. So and then uh, CT Gamer um, uh, exclamation mark. I I yeah I don't have uh, Nightbot installed there <laughs> for uh, uptime. So sorry sorry. Um, well so <laughs> yeah uh but i will get nightbot running again so but i may have had disabled for a good reason but who knows oh yeah that's right he was annoying as hell that's why 
uh, but dude, um, that's something I'd love to catch up with um, a a follow up one of these days too. It'd be really nice to. Uh, oh no! And anytime you let let me know, we'll put it in the schedule. And we'll make it happen. Like I said, it's it's it, it's fun doing our own content as well. And like what I talked about at the beginning of the show, like. Mm -hmm. If we can, whatever we can do to help others rise, the rising tide lifts all ships. And, like, it's not, if we can help each other out and we can learn from stuff. There's stuff that we're doing that other people can't. And, like, learning and growing together will make us all successful and um, showcase to everybody what we're capable of. Definitely, too. And, uh, I mean, it's just, it's very, it's a very powerful thing you, of a, a community that you learn some, for so many people. And um, even when I got off with the, um, um, with the conversation with uh, ignorance, um, by the way, if, for people that know, don't know ignorance, look her up, follow her. She's a great streamer. She does both Fortnite, uh, WoW, and she's actually going to continue doing Apex. So check her out. But what I've learned about uh, ignorance, so she said about, uh, uh, she's done what she did. It was that she streamed about three days a week as well. So she didn't start at like doing multiple days a week, which she's done like five days a week, which she started with limited days. So then she continued doing eight hours a day, which I don't know how anyone can do eight hours a day unless you have that consistency to do that too. And plus it, that mm -hmm. streaming does take so much energy out of you. So and that's one thing I've noticed with, uh, streaming is that streaming is, um, a great platform but you have to uh, know that there's a good amount uh <laughs> that you have to uh, hold yourself to try not to stream for too long so <laughs> definitely it, it, as with any yeah thing you do it takes work some more than others but it, it's definitely work and it can be rewarding if you allow it to be <laughs> oh definitely and uh, i'm gonna read the um I'm going to read the chat real quick. So you're a good man. Thanks for putting up on a show, man. I've enjoyed um, listening to you guys. I've had quite an interesting conversation. It's been really complimentary to grind. Uh, <laughs> uh, Get that grind. Get that grind. Nice. Um, and this is from uh, Nom Nom Norman. That, that's an awesome name. I, I like that name. <laughs> that, is, that is a really good name. And that is... And it's on brand, I think. <laughs> and that nails it. It is. And um and then also last um there's been another follow which is General Pal Palace? Gen oh my god. Is that a Star Wars name? General pa oh my god. <laughs> oh, thanks for the follow. Oh yeah, my uh, General Palace. I know um he's a friend of our show too. Oh my god. That no he's, way. <laughs> he's, he's very awesome. That is awesome. Uh I know next, uh, probably in the next stream, if I could try to set up a, um, a stream where I can do uh, like split screens with, uh, with myself and the person that would, that would be an awesome thing to have. So, but, um, mm -hmm. but now, but just so you guys know, we are doing this, uh, just myself and going through a discord audio, but, but it looks like, uh, the quality with discord is really phenomenal. And I'm actually loving the quality itself, even though Skype is good too, I would do a Skype, uh, interview as well because they well i do know that skype does have a great reputation when it comes to um call quality via video so that's something i will end up planning one of these days to do so that'll be very very awesome but anyways cameron um any last words or any words of encouragement you gotta say to the folks over here so with the chat oh man any any words of encouragement um yeah if if you are a creator whether you're doing in podcasts mm -hmm. or streams or videos on YouTube or what have you, like my word of encouragement is like, keep doing it. You, you may think that, you know, we, we've been doing rocket punch since 2015, mm -hmm. uh, four years and we've grown steadily, but like, don't let, don't let numbers and statistics drive you away from doing it, especially if you have a passion for it, like focus on your passion make the content you want to make put your passion in that it will show and the people will come to that hmm okay all right definitely that's uh that's good advice uh good a good words of encouragement right there um and i will continue doing that for sure so because uh and also uh ignorance you and ignorance who uh are one of the first people to be in my, my very first live podcast yes. interviews so Ooh. yeah and i didn't i had in, in no intention to write out in my questions on notes which uh, i have to say i did really well without notes <laughs> I, i'd agree yeah no this is this is awesome this is really fun getting a chance to kind of sit down and talk 
with you. Um, you mm-hmm. know, you, you've popped in on our streams and chat um, mm-hmm. when you get a chance to, and I'm, I'm glad that I was able to take the opportunity to come and chat with you yeah. on your side of the your side of the fence. Oh yeah, definitely too. And um, hopefully I can uh, do that too. And then um, and then I'm reading one on chat that says I'm Thunder T. Can I join the podcast? Oh, we're we're just about to end the podcast, uh, but however you anyone is more than welcome to have a conversation with me and i will uh anyone is open to have a live uh, interview of course we'll have to end up scheduling it so i'm dunder on uh, dunder t so i always invite uh anyone from this anyone from the spectrum which is streamers podcasters uh broadcasters radio hosts whatever you know and i'm more than uh welcome to interview with anyone too so that's all that's always awesome so hey dunder if you have anything interesting hey message me via um twitch twitch uh twitch messages and i will respond to you back uh quickly in no time so but that said, I'll I'll be open to doing that. But anyways, Cameron, I'll let you go for tonight. And since it's been a good uh, hour, and I do appreciate your time with the here and via the Leo Lungre podcast, and I will take the advice by heart and continue doing what I'm, uh, I'll do in the podcast. So yeah, no problem, man. Anytime, anytime you want us on, we'll um, we'll we'll make it work, make it happen. All right, glad to be on here. Good deal, good deal. Well, I'll let you go for tonight, uh, brother. You have a, a good rest of your, your Friday and and a great rest of the weekend, too. <laughs> All right, you do the same, Leon. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Bye for now. Okay, so that was... um. Okay, so that was it right here. Uh, but yeah, so uh, that was Cameron... Uh, Cameron... Uh, Karns from uh, Rock Punch Go and with Southern Geek er- on every week. So, uh, so great interview with uh, Cameron through the host. So, uh, through the live show, uh, I've definitely enjoyed it. So, pretty cool character. So, guys, check him up on um, Rock and Punch Live. And in fact, I'll go ahead and put the link down on the on the description below, so you guys can follow up Rocket Punch. Uh, so, um, Twitch, Twitch.tv slash Rocket Punch Live, and their website is RocketPunchGo.com. So that way you guys can follow up on their podcast and everything that you guys um, you can follow them up on their on Apple, Google, Stitcher, Spotify. They're pretty much everywhere to this point. So uh, I will put the link down down below for you to follow up on so so which is rockpunchgo.com and i've um and out and i guys anyone that's visiting uh look them up and check and uh, check your uh content out so for any of you that are not familiar but yes yeah, so and anyways goodness gracious eight to nine views oh my goodness guys well so this has been very very fun but i will go ahead and break this uh stream down since now it's been hour and a half and also want to say thank you everybody that's that come that have come into the chat and i will definitely post up uh uh this video up on youtube on my youtube channel and i will actually be working on another external channel which is on bitchute so you guys can go look up uh youtube alternatives on bitchute too i will put update my bio on bio on bitchute so you guys can see it any on pretty much on every platform so i'm going to be diversify myself so you guys can see my content out uh, out there too but with that first said uh, thank you so much for dropping by into the show so this is my my first um llg podcast so and thanks again folks uh listening or watching but wherever you guys are around the world but anyways you guys take care i'm heading out so here are some background music